The Philippines is taking bold steps to bolster its military capabilities in response to China's aggressive actions in the South China Sea. Here, the parallels can be drawn to historical instances where nations faced similar challenges. For example, during the Cold War, Finland, a neutral country bordering the Soviet Union, implemented a strategy known as Finlandization to navigate geopolitical pressures. Despite being situated between two superpowers, Finland maintained its independence by adopting a policy of pragmatic diplomacy, balancing between East and West. Similarly, the Philippines' strategic alliances with the United States and Japan echo Finland's approach, stressing the importance of forging partnerships to safeguard sovereignty within regional power dynamics. Just as Finland sought to protect its autonomy through strategic alignments, the Philippines is asserting its interest in the South China Sea while cultivating alliances to reinforce its position on the global stage. In the wake of China's persistent attempts to assert dominance over the South China Sea and encroach upon the Philippines' territorial waters, tensions in the region have reached at new heights. Recent clashes between Chinese and Filipino vessels pinpoints the escalating maritime disputes, potentially drawing in the United States, which is a long-standing ally of the Philippines. China's strategy of employing gray zone tactics aimed at coercively altering the status quo without triggering a military response has targeted the Philippines in particular. Over the past nine months, Filipino vessels have encountered Chinese military-grade lasers and water cannons, obstructing their access to the disputed Spratly Islands. In a bold move reminiscent of Chinese tactics, Manila recently deployed Coast Guard officials as fishermen to remove buoys blocking Filipino fishermen from their exclusive economic zone. EEZ. This symbolic act of defiance exposed China's bullying tactics and served as a rallying cry for other nations facing similar intimidation. China's objective includes pressuring the Philippines to surrender its claim to Second Thomas Shoal, which is a strategic reef in the Spratly Islands. Despite Chinese harassment, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has remained steadfast in defending Philippine sovereignty, citing the 2016 international arbitral ruling against China's expansive maritime claims. The Philippine stance has garnered support from the United States, with whom it recently reaffirmed mutual defense commitments under the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty. The Biden administration has intensified military cooperation through bilateral talks and joint military exercises, signaling a deepening of the U.S.-Philippines alliance. Furthermore, other nations such as Japan, Australia, and Canada have demonstrated solidarity with the Philippines against China's maritime aggression. Tokyo has bolstered defense ties, while Australia has conducted joint patrols with the Philippines in the South China Sea. By leading the charge against China's maritime bullying, the Philippines is setting a precedent for Southeast Asian nations to assert their sovereignty and safeguard vital resources. With robust support from Washington and its allies, Manila is challenging China's gray zone activities and promoting free and open seas, reshaping the regional security landscape in favor of sovereign nations. The Philippines is embarking on a significant effort to upgrade its military infrastructure, allocating an impressive $35 billion over the next decade. This initiative aims to bolster the nation's defense capabilities, particularly in the South China Sea. President Ferdinand Bong Bong Marcos has greenlit these modernization efforts, focusing on strengthening the Navy, Air Force, surveillance, and other military assets. Colonel Francel Margaret Padilla, spokesperson for the Armed Forces of the Philippines, highlight the importance of this capability enhancement, emphasizing its significant contribution to national defense as the country transitions from domestic security operations to territorial defense. We're shifting from in, in, internal to external defense. Yes. So because of this, uh, Horizon 3 projects will be focused mainly uh, more on territorial defense already. So we'll be procuring more ships, okay. more uh, aircrafts, enhance their cybersecurity operations. Chief of Staff Romeo Brauner Jr. has disclosed plans to acquire more warships, combat aircraft, radars, and other essential equipment under this modernization initiative. The modernization plan includes various acquisitions such as multi-role combat aircraft, MRCA, radars, additional frigates, guided missile systems, helicopters, and submarines. Notably, the Philippine Navy is poised to acquire its first submarines, with countries like South Korea, Spain, and France expressing interest in supplying them. Moreover, the Philippines is set 
to receive its inaugural batch of the coastal missile system, BrahMos, following a significant investment of approximately $375 million. The deployment of the BrahMos missile system, strategically positioned in the South China Sea, marks a significant step, making the Philippines the first country outside India to utilize this advanced technology. With its formidable capabilities, including a supersonic speed of Mach 2.8 and an effective range of approximately 300 kilometers, the BrahMos missile system enhances the Philippines' defensive posture and asserts sovereignty over its exclusive economic zone. Easy. In parallel, the Philippines is enhancing its military presence on islands and reefs in the contested South China Sea, as announced by Manila's military chief, Romeo Bronner. This initiative focuses on improving the liveability of these features for troops stationed there, including the installation of essential infrastructure like desalination machines. Despite ongoing territorial disputes involving multiple claimants, including China, the Philippines remains steadfast in its commitment to international law and sustainability. Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro affirmed the country's determination to ensure the unimpeded and peaceful exploration and exploitation of natural resources within its EEZ, signaling a proactive stance in safeguarding national interests. During a visit to Australia, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. of the Philippines reiterated the country's commitment to cooperation with China regarding talks on the disputed South China Sea. However, he emphasized that the Philippines would push back if its sovereignty and maritime rights were disregarded. Marcos expressed his dedication to working with Southeast Asian nations and China to establish a long-awaited code of conduct for the South China Sea anchored on international law. Speaking at a Lowy Institute forum, Marcos pinpointed the importance of managing tensions effectively for the success of COC negotiations. He reaffirmed the Philippines' stance of not surrendering any of its territories to foreign powers. The Philippines, of course, understands that widening geopolitical polarities around the world and the sharpening strategic competition between the People's Republic of China and the United States of America have become a reality permeating the regional strategic environment. We in the Indo-Pacific must ensure that great powers do not treat the world as an arena for their competition. The pursuit of the great powers' respective strategic goals must never come at the expense of the interests of smaller states, nor of regional and international peace. Despite strained relations with China since Marcos assumed office in 2022, characterized by disputes over atolls and reefs in the South China Sea, the Philippines has strengthened its defense ties with the United States, a move Marcos emphasized was the country's choice. Highlighting the enduring alliance with the United States as a pillar of regional stability, Marcos emphasized the Philippines' commitment to strengthening it further. Asia-Pacific region, I would be stating the obvious uh, to say that our longest partner and ally has been the United States. Uh, we will continue to work together with, uh, with our great partners uh, to, uh, uh, to build and, and modernize uh, your capability as, as well as uh, increase our interoperability. He departed from his predecessor's pro-China stance, accusing Beijing of aggression in the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. Under Marcos, the Philippines has expanded the number of bases accessible to U.S. forces, including new sites facing Taiwan. Regular U.S.-Philippine military exercises have extended to joint air and sea patrols over the South China Sea and near Taiwan, actions viewed by China as provocative. Marcos criticized the excessive focus on the superpower rivalry between the United States and China, stressing the importance of addressing aggressive, unilateral actions that violate international law. He announced approval of the third phase of the military's acquisition plan to support the country's shift towards external defense, ensuring the peaceful exploration and exploitation of natural resources within its jurisdiction, including its exclusive economic zone. During a summit in Manila between Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Japan affirmed its commitment to providing defense-related equipment to the Philippines. These included small patrol vessels, radars, and drones under Japan's new Official Security Assistance OSA, framework. The initiative aimed to increase security ties with the Philippines in response to China's aggressive maritime expansion in the East and South China Seas. The decision to supply defense equipment aligns with Japan's national security strategy emphasizing cooperation with like-minded countries to reinforce security. And agreed with the Philippines to provide coastal surveillance radars to the Philippines Navy as the first cooperation project in the world under Japan's newly established 
Official Security Assistance, OSA. Unlike official development assistance, OSA enables direct support for the armed forces of partner nations with shared objectives. Territorial disputes between the Philippines and China, particularly in the South China Sea, have escalated, prompting Japan and the Philippines to enter negotiations for a Reciprocal Access Agreement, RAA. This agreement will facilitate joint training between Japan's self-defense forces and the Philippine military. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno recognized Japan's commitment to upholding a free and open international order based on the rule of law and described the Philippines as a strategic partner sharing fundamental values and principles, expressing Japan's eagerness to strengthen the bilateral relationship. Japan's prioritization of the Philippines as the first recipient of OSA signifies its commitment to supporting the Philippines and enhancing security cooperation. Operation. Additionally, the RAA negotiation highlights Japan's efforts to deepen ties with Manila and pinpoint the importance of joint training and cooperation in addressing regional security challenges, particularly concerning China's assertive actions. The momentum for enhanced security cooperation has been bolstered by the Marcos administration's efforts to improve relations with the United States since assuming office in June 2022. Both Tokyo and Manila anticipate that the conclusion of the RAA will pave the way for expanded joint training activities, including with Washington. The inaugural joint talks between the National Security Advisors of the United States, Japan, and the Philippines on June 16th last year marked a significant milestone in regional security cooperation. In response to escalating tensions over North Korea, China, and Ukraine, the three nations affirmed their commitment to bolstering defense cooperation to adapt to the evolving security landscape. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan reported that discussions among himself, Takio Akiba of Japan, and Eduardo Ano of the Philippines centered on addressing the turbulent regional security environment. Their joint efforts aim to enhance peace and stability, particularly in critical areas such as freedom of navigation and economic security. A joint statement issued by Sullivan, Akiba, and Anno claimed the importance of strengthening trilateral cooperation, building upon existing alliances between Japan and the U.S., as well as between the Philippines and the U.S. Sullivan highlighted the significance of this new trilateral framework, emphasizing its integration into broader U.S. alliances in the Indo-Pacific. The engagement includes three-way cooperation with Japan and South Korea, along with the Quad Security Dialogue involving Australia, India, Japan, and the United States. Discussions encompassed opportunities for joint naval exercises in the Indo-Pacific, as well as deepening military cooperation in humanitarian assistance and disaster relief efforts. Japan's adoption of a new national security strategy last December include a significant increase in defense spending and security assistance for developing nations. This strategy is particularly relevant for the Philippines, which is expected to benefit from Japanese support in infrastructure development and security assistance. As tensions persist in the South China Sea among multiple claimants, including China, the United States reaffirmed its commitment to freedom of navigation and peaceful dispute resolution in the region. Likewise, the Philippines' decision to acquire its first submarine represent a significant shift towards a more proactive stance in safeguarding its interests beyond its borders, according to analysts. Approved by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. as part of the military's modernization plan. Ang commitment para mag-operate mag, mag ng submarine is not a small commitment. It is a very, uh, it is a very large commitment because uh, the training that is involved, the equipment uh, that is involved, and the, the, the operational uh, requirements that are involved are quite significant. Chester Cabalza, founder of the International Development and Security Cooperation Think Tank, views the submarine purchase as a transformative step, signaling a departure from the country's traditional focus on internal security towards a stronger emphasis on territorial defense. Cabalza believes this move will position the Philippines as a maritime power in the region. The Philippines' defense budget for 2024, which includes additional funding to enhance its presence in the South China Sea, signals its commitment to strengthen its military capabilities. Mark Mananton, director of cybersecurity and critical technologies at the Pacific Forum International sees the submarine acquisition as a sign of Manila's growing security assertiveness. In this regard, several submarine manufacturers have eagerly presented their offerings to the Philippines, reflecting the keen interest in securing a contract. Spain's Navantia stands out with its proposal of two S-80-class Isaac Peral submarines, valued at US $1.7 billion. This offer includes not only the acquisition of submarines, but also the construction of a submarine base in Ormoc City, late along with comprehensive training, technology transfer, and maintenance support. Navantia's S-80-class submarines, 
measuring 81 meters in length, boasts advanced capabilities, including the ability to launch attacks from sea to land and conduct various missions such as surveillance and anti-submarine operations. Equipped with an Air Independent Propulsion AIP system, these submarines can remain submerged for extended periods, enhancing their operational effectiveness. Furthermore, the submarines offered by Navantia can deploy guided harpoon missiles and Tomahawk cruise missiles, further augmenting the Philippines' defensive capabilities in the maritime domain. In addition to Navantia, France's naval group is competing to provide submarines to the Philippines, offering two diesel-electric Scorpion-class submarines. Meanwhile, South Korean company Hanwha Ocean, formerly known as DSME, is also vying for the opportunity to supply submarines to the Philippine Navy. Their proposal of the Jongbogo III submarines, equipped with advanced propulsion systems and guided missile capabilities, presents another compelling option for the Philippines. Overall, the race among Spain, France, and South Korea to supply submarines to the Philippines highlights the country's commitment to enhancing its defense capabilities in the face of evolving security challenges. Overall, analysts view the submarine acquisition as a pivotal moment for the Philippines. The Philippines is currently deliberating whether to proceed with the acquisition of its inaugural submarine, a decision that holds the potential to increase the country's naval capabilities amid a strategic shift toward external defense, stated Colonel Francel Margaret Padilla, spokesperson for the Armed Forces of the Philippines. As tensions escalate in the South China Sea, the Philippines is determined to assert its sovereignty and defend its interests. By bolstering its military capabilities, forging strategic alliances with the United States and Japan, and exploring new avenues such as acquiring submarines, the Philippines is sending a clear message that it will not tolerate further encroachment on its territorial waters. Through diplomatic engagement, modernization efforts, and international support, the Philippines is reshaping the regional security landscape, challenging China's gray zone tactics, and promoting the principles of freedom of navigation and territorial integrity.